Hello and welcome back to what is most likely going to be the final video for our base beginner project. In the last video we ironed out a lot of the details in our weapon and in this video we're going to be doing a little bit extra. We're going to be making a target that we can record where our projectile has hit on it and we are going to output that to some sort of text mesh. So we'll be creating a few new objects, some scripts, as well as getting all those things to talk to one another. And the first thing that we're going to do is create our little target and all I'm going to do for that is use a cylinder. So I'm going to come into my hierarchy here, I'm going to right click, I'm going to go to 3D object and I'm going to create a cylinder. We're then going to change the scaling of the object where we're going to keep the X and the Z the same but I think we're going to make the Y 0.01. And then we're going to get rid of this capsule collider and we're going to replace this with a mesh collider. Because what we're ultimately going to be doing for this target here, we double click on it, is that wherever our projectile hits on it, we're going to be measure its distance from the center and then we're going to get a score based on that. So what we're going to do now is I guess we'll add a material to it. And if you want to, you can create additional rings. I think I'll just create a, well maybe we'll just duplicate this one and we'll just make it a little bit smaller. So I'll do 0 0.5 and this is just going to be for visual representation. So I'm going to remove the mesh collider on this one because we're primarily going to use the on collision events for just this collider here. So we can move this up a little bit and then we'll just make this white so we can see it a bit better. Or maybe what we'll do is we'll actually make a gray material for this. So let's duplicate our pink material and we'll just make this a gray color. And we'll just do 75. There we go. So which one looks better? I think gray on the outside looks better. So we have that and then I'm going to hold control so we can rotate this upright and we'll move this out to our scene so we can fire at it. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So now we have our little target here and we'll just call it target. And then we're going to need to set up a couple scripts for this where we're going to create a script we're going to call target and then we're going to have an extra script for the actual text mesh that we're going to be outputting towards and we'll just call that I guess we can just call it score we'll call it that's fine and then we're just going to make a prefab out of this so we can call this center and we'll apply our little target script to this and then we'll just turn it into a prefab there we go and then for the actual feedback on our score, you can use Text Mesh Pro if you want to, but just for simplicity, I'm just going to use a normal Text Mesh. The only thing we'll have to do is we'll have to scale it down a little bit to, to make the text a little bit crisper, or not completely blurry, because I think if we drag this up a little bit, and let's just write something here, that looks wonderful. <laughs> so let's make this a little bit smaller. I think this is small enough which will inadvertently make our text incredibly small. So let's make that a little bit bigger. So we'll just make this 100. We may actually have to make this smaller than I thought. Well, actually, I think I got these backwards. We'll do character size of three, and we need a font size of like 100 or something. All right, that's, an, that's, that's a lot better. That's actually kind of usable. Okay, so we have that. Now let's do our just oriented so it's a little bit easier to work with. And we'll move this above our little target here so we can output this. So we'll just call this score and I guess we'll set the default text to score as well. And then we'll set our add our score script to that and we'll create another prefab for that. Okay, so I think that about does it for the whole like little scene setup that we're doing. So what we'll do now is we're going to open up our weapon script first and work on that because we're going to add because we're going to add a little bit of recoil and then we'll be working on our target as well as our score. So let's do that now. All right, so now that we're in our weapon script, the first thing that we're going to need to do is have a value for our recoil. So we're going to create a float value that we'll just call recoil and we'll initialize that to a value of one. I don't know if that's going to be a good value to start off with, but we can change it later. And then we're going to come down below our create projectile function and we're going to create a new one that we're just going to be calling apply recoil all right well i lied actually we're gonna need to get a reference to our rigid body as well so let's do that and 
and we'll need to then get it in awake. There we go. And then we can move on down to apply recoil. Where it's going to be pretty simple to our projectile, where we're just going to be applying a relative force, where we'll get our rigid body, we'll add a relative force. And this may be a little bit weird, but we're going to be using vector 3.right, and we'll be multiplying that by our recoil value. And this is because if you remember why we needed that attach point is because because the orientation of it isn't exactly correct. So you may want to look at the mesh that you're using and see whatever axis is going in the opposite direction of whatever of where the weapon is pointed. And for this particular asset, this is going to be the red axis. So in other words, vector three dot right. Okay, and then like before, we'll just do a force mode impulse. There we go. Okay, now that's actually it for our weapon. Now let's go into our target where the first thing that we're going to need to do is add a new namespace because we're actually going to be using a custom event for this to talk to our little score text mesh that we have. And we'll need to use unity engine dot events. And we'll be utilizing unity events specifically. And when you're using them and you want to pass a value to them, we need to create our own class. But what we're first going to do is just look at a normal sort of normal unity event that we're just a public unity event and we'll just call this on hit and this is where we've actually created one of those events that we've used previously on our interactables kind of like the on select the on activate or if you're familiar with canvas buttons the on click but if we want to pass a value we'll need to do something a little bit extra obviously this just lets us know like hey something has happened it doesn't really give any additional information so what we need to do here is create a public class that we're just going to call hit event. And then it's going to inherit from unity event. And you'll notice that there's a version of it here that has these two little carrots here, which kind of lets us know that we can create events with different sort of arguments in them. And in our case, we're going to just want to pass an int value to our little text mesh. So we'll write int. Or if we wanted to, we could pass a string too, but we'll just make it a number value. And then we'll just put our curly braces here. But now we'll need to replace this unity event with our hit event. There we go. But if we left it like this, this actually wouldn't be visible in the inspector. So what we'll need to do is mark it as serializable. And we can do that by making sure we first have the system namespace up at the top where if we just delete these two and leave the system there, we can put some little blocky open and close brackets. I actually have no idea what those are called. And we'll just say serializable. There we go. So now we have our own little custom event in the inspector that can output an int value. And if you used maybe a slider in canvas or something like that, that outputs a float value, we basically made the equivalent of that, but with an int value. Okay, cool. Now that we have that, let's remove these two functions because we're not going to need those. And for our target, we're going to be using on collision enter to detect for other objects. So we'll say on collision enter. And what we're going to want to do here is check to see if the object that's hitting this target is a projectile and then doing some functionality on it. Now we haven't set up that tag just yet. So we'll do that once we get back into the inspector. But what we will do is create the signature for this function that we're just going to call this figure out score where we're going to be passing in our hit position. Okay, there we go. Now when our projectile hits this target and it gets passed into this on collision enter function, we're going to write if collision.gameObject compare tag and if it's a projectile, then we're going to want to figure out some score. So we'll say figure out score and then we'll be passing in the collision transform position. There we go. So the projectile hits the target and then we go, hey, can you figure out a score? And we give it the position of the projectile. And since we have a simple circular target, we can just use vector 3 distance to see how far an object is from the center of the target. So let's first do that. Let's create a float that we'll just call distance from center. 
And we can use this nifty function in the vector3 class called distance to measure the distance between two points. So all we need to do is say, what's the position of the target and what's the pip position and how far are they away from each other? We're also gonna just have a little int here that we're gonna call score. And now we just need a couple of if statements here, where by default, if you remember, we use that cylinder within our scene, it has a diameter of one meter, where we can then do a quick little segmentation of that meter to have different sections for different score values. And we'll just, for simplicity, we'll have two. So we'll first write if our distance from center is less than 0.25, then we'll say that our score is 15. So this basically says, if you're halfway close to the center, we'll give you 15 points. But then we'll also check to see, but if that value isn't within that inner circle, we're gonna wanna check to see if it's in the outer circle. So we can just say, if the distance from center is less than 0.5. So we effectively have created two sort of stages here, where if you get in the inner circle, we'll give you 15 points, but if you're in the outer circle, we'll give you five points. There we go. And then finally, we're gonna use that hit event we created. So we'll say on hit, we'll use this invoke method, which is what you need to use when you're dealing with events. And it's gonna ask for an integer value. So we'll just pass in our score. And there we go. So that's actually it for our target. Let's do our score now. Where well, this is an incredibly simple script where we're just gonna have a text mesh. We're actually not gonna need either of these two functions so we can get rid of them. And we'll create an awake so we can get our text mesh. And then we'll just create a public function that we'll just call show score. So we'll say public void show score, where we'll be passing in an integer value and we'll be getting our text mesh. It's text field, which is gonna let us actually change the string that we're outputting. And we're gonna give it our score. And we'll also be converting that integer value to a string so we can actually output it. All right, now that's actually it for all the little extra bits. Let's go into Unity so we can set up that tag and then we can connect our stuff in our scene. All right, and before I forget, let's go to our projectile prefab. Let's go to our tags here and we'll add a new tag that we'll just call projectile. There we go. Let's go back into our scene. Well, actually, getting ahead of myself, let's stay in our projectile and let's make sure we actually apply that tag because make sure you do this because you may do exactly what I almost did, which is you create the tag, but you forget to apply it. So make sure you apply that tag or nothing's gonna work. So now that we have that, now we need to make sure that our little target here is going to communicate with our score. And if you notice, we now have our new nifty little on hit event that's gonna output an integer. So we'll hit our plus sign, we'll drag our score onto there, and then we'll wanna access that show score function. So go to score, and you'll notice that we actually have this dynamic integer here, where this is gonna pass whatever value that the target is getting to our little score here make sure that you don't use the show score down here in the static parameters, because this will just give you a field to input a value manually. When you use the dynamic, you don't get that because our code is going to be supplying that value. All right, so let's save and let's hit play. And you may notice that we're getting some pretty inconsistent results with our collision. So let's take a look at fixing that. Now, when you're working with fast moving rigid bodies, you may need to update what kind of collision detection that we're, we're using. And if we go to our projectile here and we expand our rigid body, you'll notice that we're currently using discrete collision detection, where this is the most performant, which is why it's done by default. But for our object, we're gonna wanna use continuous. So we'll click that, we'll go back to our main scene and let's hit play. All right, and now it looks like we're getting much better results. And I think that about does it for this video and actually this VR beginner series. I hope you found it useful, but you know, we may end up adding to this project in the future with new mechanics or when the XR toolkit gets an update or something like that. But until then, I'll see you around.